Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? Hope you're all alright today. I'm going to turn the TV down. Um, hope you guys are alright today. Hope everything's okay. You're having a good time and life's good for you. Um, welcome back to the Franklin Kitchen. Okay, today I want to show you how to make homemade pilau rice and homemade chicken korma. My way. Um, absolutely beautiful dishes if they're done right. But I've done this meal one time before, okay? I've done it one time before, so I've got it still written down because I don't know 100% possible because I've only done it once before. But when I did do it before, it tasted delicious, just out the ones you get out of the takeaway. Okay, so, um, this is a three-stage cook as well because the rice has to be cooked on its own separately, so that's one cook. Two, the chicken has to be marinated first for either an hour or overnight. So that's stage two. And then stage three, we've got to cook the chicken after it's marinated. And then add God knows how many different herbs and ingredients and spices to it. This is a big meal in my opinion. It's probably the most difficult meal I've ever cooked. Um, but if it's done right, stage by stage, step by step, oh, it comes out, the smells in here, uh, at the kitchen, and it comes out absolutely delicious. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do first, what I'll do is I'll leave the video and then I'll pause it and then I'll add things on as we go. Now, it's coming up 20 past 2, you guys know me, you know I have to do a school run at 3 o'clock, so I've only got 40 minutes, but I won't start cooking the meal for the family, as you guys know, until I get home up past 3 with all the kids and then the wife comes in at 4 o'clock. That will give plenty of time for your chicken to marinate. Okay, but we're going to do that separately. The first thing I want to show you how to do is do the pilau rice on the quid because you can cook rice anytime, keep it to the side and then reheat it up at the end or give it a quick blast in the microwave. But it will be cooked. Okay, so this is how I cook my normal pilau rice. What I normally do is cheat. I normally make my own pilau rice with all my herbs, spices and my ingredients and then what I'll do is I'll cheat. I'll go and buy chopped diced chicken from the supermarket in a packet and then I'll buy the jars of cornmeal sauce. Not anymore. After the last time and the first time I tried this and it came out absolutely delicious, I thought to myself, I'm never going to buy a jar again. Anyway, enough of the crap, enough of the boring stuff. Let's do this, okay? Now, this is how I do my pilau rice, okay? Now, the first thing I like cooking with and the rice I like cooking with, basmati rice. Beautiful, okay? You can get it in the bags or on its own. I'm using, on its own, normal. Now, you know me, I normally use my cups. There's my cup. Okay, now always for a cup of rice, always double your water. So if you're going to use one cup of whole rice up top, one cup of rice, two cups of water. Two cups of rice, four cups of water. Three cups of rice, six cups of water, and so on. Because there's only five of us, one full cup, it doesn't look very big, but it actually does put a lot of rice in here, and does, it's, it's enough for us five, okay? So this is what I've done. Full cup of basmati rice. I've put it in a sieve. Be careful to start dripping. I put it in a sieve and then I've rinsed it under cold water to rinse all of the starch out of it. I don't want to rinse it all out, but I want to rinse some of the starch out of it to stop it sticking. Now, I don't care who you are and I don't care what you do. Um, very, very rare do I see anybody cook things that comes out single grains at a time without being stuck. Don't know how they do it. I can't do it. I don't really care. All right, because it all goes in a big lump on a spoon and in my gob anyway. All right, so this is how we're going to do it. All right, so my pilau rice is how I normally do it. This is how I'm going to go. Okay, you're going to need your basmati rice, cut full, rinse in a sieve. Saucepan. Okay. First thing you're going to need in that saucepan, a dash of olive oil. I've got to be careful where I cook because I'm in a white t-shirt. When I do actually cook later on, I'll be putting um, an apron on. Okay. Now, apart from your rice, I put in my basmati rice, uh, my basmati pilau rice, the following. Bay leaves. Cardinal pods, cloves, turmeric, cumin, and last but not least, cinnamon. Now these are supposed to be cinnamon sticks, but you guys know the experience the other day with the cinnamon sticks. I don't like them, so I use cinnamon instead. Okay, now, if you're doubling on your rice, you double on your ingredients. So you'd have two leaf, four pods, four cloves, and four teaspoons of these three. But because I'm only doing one, I'm going to half that, so I'm going to do say one bait chopped in half, two or three pods, two or three cloves, and half teaspoons of all three. And they go in first. So I've got to be careful and I don't spill anything down myself. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a saucepan on the gas. We're going to turn on. 
a little olive oil, like that, just to eat that up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put those ingredients in first. So watch me as I do it. I know I'm a bit of a distance away, but you can generally see what I'm going to do. I've got to watch it because I've got my window open as well and the wind's blowing. But this is how I would normally do it, okay? Saucepan, olive oil. First thing, one bay leaf. Straight into the oil. There you go there, I've got half there. I'll take this out at the end anyway. So bay leaf straight in, little one, little teeny one there, little half of broken one, bay leaf. That's that. That's that. Looks good, that's that done. Okay, right. Next thing, cardamom pods. The famous Indian smell. Oh, delicious. There's a little tag around now. I'm gonna grab that. I'm gonna grab three of these. I'm not gonna crush them, don't crush them. Just three pods. Three pods are like that, straight into the oil. Okay? That's that one done. Next thing I'm gonna do, cloves. See them? Beautiful smell again. Reminds me when you got two fake. Okay, so grab hold of them. Same again. I would put two or three of them in, so I'm gonna put three in. Okay, one, two, one, two, three. Okay, so there you go, three cloves. One, two, three, done. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna, as you say, half teaspoons. See that, there? So you don't need to crack it open, because the oil does it for you, just like I said. Right, half teaspoons of each of these guys, all right, you ready? Half teaspoons, half teaspoon of cinnamon, straight in. Half teaspoon, right, let's put that on now. Do it one at a time so I don't rush and show you. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of turmeric. Okay, it's already beginning to smell, you should smell it out, it's lovely. Half a teaspoon of turmeric. And last but not least, half a teaspoon, come in. Okay, and that's it. That's your dry ingredients to put in your Bilo Russ. So let's put a half a teaspoon of that. Come in, go. Oh, it smells out here gorgeous already. Okay, that's it. That's all you do, okay? So now what you do is you just put them to the side. Like They're all done now. That's it, done, sorted. Okay, tell you guys down. You just give them a little cook in the oil. Like that, just to, <coughs> excuse me, infuse all the herbs and spices. You don't want to burn it. <coughs> As you can see, I'm starting to smoke now. You don't want to burn it. Bloody smoke alarm's going to go off in a minute. All right, anyway. Right, now you've done that, mix them all together, straight in with your rice, straight in, watch. Straight in. Sit straight in with your rice. Give your rice a turn, I've got to watch, I'm stepping backwards because I don't want to splash yellow, you know, I don't want to splash yellow crap all over my t-shirt, because I'll be gutted. Right, so mix all the herbs and spices with them, in your dry rice, in your oil, etc, etc, etc. I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute anyway. Okay, and what you do is all that. Okay, you just mix all them together. Just so a little bit up a little bit because it's gone a bit cold. They're not like that. Okay, and what you've left with is your rice now, which has soaked up your oil, all the herbs and spices, and it's like that. Okay, so maybe cup, and it's like that. Okay, now what you're going to do for so that simply, so you eat up. Grab hold of two cups, because you use one cup, two cups of water, all the way up to the top. So you go. One. And two. Get ready. That's all you're going to need. You don't need any more than two cups. One. Two. Okay. That's it. That's it. Give that a gentle stir now. I'm stepping backwards again. Give that a gentle stir. And you are left with... This here, if you can see it, all the little herbs, the cardamom pods and the cloves and the bay floating about where all the herbs have mixed together, the powders, and this will be what flavours your rice and obviously what turns your pilau rice that famous orangey, yellow, golden colour. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to have a gentle stir just to make sure everything's mixed up. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to leave that now. We're going to leave there, look, let me spoon. Yeah. Here's your spoon, there's your colour, which is how your pilo rice is going to come out. You eat it always when you're Indian, love it. Alright, put that on now. We're going to leave that on the gas and we're going to heat it. Okay, let's grab a lid. Then let's get out of the lid. We're going to grab a lid. We'll put a lid on. Oh, the colour just fell off. We're going to grab a lid. 
and put that on, wait until that boils. That'll take about 10 minutes to boil, 5 or 10 minutes to boil. As soon as it starts to boil, turn it down and simmer it for about 10 minutes. You're looking for al dente. What should happen is, if you've done it right with the right amount of mixture of rice against water, the rice will soak up the water, the water will completely disappear and you'll be left with beautiful rice. That's it. And it will be cooked. Okay? So that's it. I'm going to stop the video now and prepare the chicken stuff while the rice is cooking, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Stay there two minutes, let me prepare the chicken and we'll marinate it before I go to school and then you and me are going to come back after school and we're going to cook the whole meal together, alright? Alright, stay there, see you in a minute. Okay guys, we're back. Got all the bits in front of you now, okay, you can see it, look, it's starting to steam, look, I'll take that away. It's starting to steam, my lid's going... Okay, and we'll start bubbling. Take your lid off, okay? Oh, it smells gorgeous. Take your lid off. Give it a stir, just to stir it in, now it's boiling. Give it a little stir like that, all the way around like that. Now you can leave the gas up and boil the crap out of it if you want. Or you can just turn it down so it's just bubbly simmering nicely. As I said, all you want now is el dente. You want all your water to disappear. So we're going to put that lid back on, we're going to turn the gas down, like that. And just let that simmer away nicely there. Or five to ten minutes. Normally, what it does is it comes all the way up to the top, boils over, and covers the cooker. So what I normally do, so I just take my lid off. Now just put my lid there like that. You want it steamed and soft. Anyway, chicken. Now I'm going to marinate the chicken while the rice is cooking. Okay, chicken. Any chicken you want, boned or not boned, but we're doing a corner. So butchers job, as you know, because they don't like supermarket crap. Okay, round the butchers down the road. Kilo, 2.2 pounds, so to speak. Chopped chicken breast. Done. Okay, it's already chopped, it's already done. So, what we're going to do is we'll take it out of the bag, right straight in your pot. Chopped chicken breast, okay? Chopped chicken breast, as I said, about two pounds. Feed five people nicely. Pretty big chunks. Yeah, they're pretty big chunks, them, so. Give me a pair of scissors, we'll chop, chop, cut all them chunks down. So, anyway, just on the quick. Okay, just cut them quickly, yeah, it's a bit, some of them are a bit big, so just chop them down a little bit. <coughs> okay, so hope you guys, hope you guys do actually try this because this particular one is absolutely delicious. I didn't have much, would I have faith in myself, I suppose, I suppose I'm being unfair. Would I didn't have faith in myself, um, <coughs> excuse me, when I cooked this, I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. Like I said, I normally cheat and buy the jars. But when I did cook this, wow, it was absolutely mouth-watering delicious. So I thought to myself, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys how to do this, because it's delish. And as I said, when we pay loud, that's how I do it anyway. So I ain't really showing you anything different there to what I normally do. But this particular corner, as I said, this will be the second time I've cooked it. So once again, I'm kind of in the rookie stages of learning how to do it. So please bear with me. Okay, so that's all right, that's okay. So, like I said, a bit sticky and gooey, so let me wash my hands. I'm running out of time here, it's 25 to 3. And I've got to go and get the kids at 3 o'clock, so. Okay, bowl, chopped chicken breast, okay? Okay, to that bowl, you want to add the following ingredients. One cup, don't forget to use the same cup. One cup, natural yogurt. Ordinary this time. Ordinary, natural white yogurt. Going to pop the top. Gonna pop at the top, gonna grab a spoon, and open that up like that. Grab the yogurt, nice and runny, look. Beautiful. Okay, and we're gonna tip that straight in the cup, all the way to the top. Okay, delish. Mm. Oh. Mm. Not out like that other. Other crap I bought the other day, do you remember when I've done the other one? God, it's really bitter. Anyway, right, there you go. Cup of yogurt, straight in your chicken. Straight in. Okay, no messing around, straight in with your chicken. Done. Okay, that bit of tissue. Okay, now to that, what you're supposed to do is add a whole tablespoon. A whole tablespoon of garlic and ginger. That's going to be strong compared with all the other ingredients that go in this. So I'm not going to do that. I'm 
is just going to go four teaspoons across the board. Okay. Let's go teaspoon. Okay. Four teaspoons across the board. Okay. To your chopped chicken and your cup of yogurt, you're going to add the following ingredients: one teaspoon ginger. Okay. Keep watching what I'm doing. One tablespoon. Oh, one tablespoon ginger. Yeah, straight in. One. One tablespoon of ginger. Okay. One tablespoon garlic. You can use uh, ordinary garlic cloves. Uh, garlic, yeah, garlic cloves if you want. Teaspoon. Straight in. Second ingredient. Third ingredient. Black pepper. Be generous because they're supposed to be peppercorns, but I like the little broken bits. Here you teeth. Peppercorn, okay? And then last but not least, one teaspoon turmeric. Let's do that. Okay. Alright. Teaspoon turmeric. Done. Straight in. That's it. That's your chicken. That's your chicken done. And now we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna marinate it. Ready? Spoon. That's what she looks like. All your herbs, spices, ingredients, your yogurt and your chicken. Now what you're going to do is turn it over and mix all of that together. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, look at that. That looks delish. That looks delish. Beautiful. One in there like that. Just give it a gentle stir. Covering all your chicken. Turn it over. I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute. And this is it. This is how you're going to marinate it. You're going to marinate your chicken. Right, it's going to be drop dead gorgeous when it goes into the pan later on when I cook it up. And that's it. There you go, ready? That already turning that famous yellow colour, but anyway, go. See? There you go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave that. Now, as I said, it's either one hour or overnight. We're going to do it for one hour, or at least until when I come back from school. So, grab all of that, put it up there, out of the way. I'm going to put some tissue over it, cover it over, save the flies having a nosh. Put that over there like that. Done. That's it. I don't know if you can see it steaming or not. That's a bit, that's a bit hot. See it steaming? Okay. Oh, it smells delicious. Let's have a look, because that looks cooked to me. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, it smells absolutely breathtaking. Okay, and there you go. Done your rice. All your water's gone. And there you have in less than 10 minutes, beautiful, I can get out of the way of the light, beautiful, homemade pilau rice. Are you ready? Let's have a taste. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, mm. oh, beautiful. Homemade pilau rice. All your cardin and pods in there, and your cloves and your bow. It's all done, ready, now to be served. Rice done. So we've got our rice pilau rice cooked, already done. Already, excuse me, already waiting. And we've got our cheese, uh, Chinese, uh, oh my god, and our chicken marinating. And oh no, it's bloody hot air, it's got the door shut again. 30 degrees, gas is on. So excuse me, well I'm sweating all over the place here, yeah, but anyway. Um, yeah, so pilau rice is cooked, ready to be served later on. Your chicken's marinating nicely. And as I said, I'm gonna go and do the business with the kids. And then when I get back after the school one, off all the top, I'm going to stick my famous apron on. And uh, we're going to cook the chicken korma together, you and me. And you're going to see it. The kids are going to be here. The wife should be home. And you'll see the pilau rice. We'll give it a quick blast in the microwave just to warm it up if it needs it. We're going to cook the chicken. And then you're going to see me put him on the plate. Um, I'm going to cut down any old pork rinds, mate. Get some exercise. So, this meal should be with proper dumbs and naan bread. But I'm going to cut them out this time and just do... Chicken korma and pilau rice. Okay? Right, guys, see ya after school. Hey, what's up, guys? Back. Back from the school run. Wow, oh, I tell you, 30 odd degrees out there. The car is absolutely stifling. So I'd like to stay like this as I am. But you're thinking to yourself, oh, what's the matter with him? He's got his t shirt up again, getting his giblets out everywhere. Don't mean that. Sorry about that. It's too hot, but I don't want to cook like this because I'm doing what was like. 
oils and splashes and stuff that will stain me. So I'm going to go and stick the apron on. Two secs. Okay, there you go. Don't laugh. All right. <laughs> Right, I've got to be careful because I've already taken 20 minutes as it is. Right, and the kids are home, so we're going to have lots of messing around. So, let's have a quick recap while I'm doing my thing up. All right, right, Lars? Yeah. Right, let's have a quick recap on why I'm doing my apron up. Okay, I showed you how to do the pedo rice earlier on. We've marinated the chicken, yes? Okay, now, there are two other things you need to do before you start cooking your korma. The first one, uh, sorry, three things. Okay, the first thing you've got to do, one cup of fresh cream. And inside that fresh cream, if you can just see it, you want half a teaspoon of saffron strands. Now out of the 10 to 15 different herbs and spices I'm using, saffron is probably the most expensive. Believe it or not, there's a teeny weeny bag in there, literally a teeny weeny bag. With You'd be lucky if there's a teaspoon of strands in there. That's over two quid, believe it or not. But it's still cheaper than going to the Indian takeaway and buying a real thing. Okay, so that's the first job you need to do. Do that, cup of fresh single cream, half a teaspoon of saffron strands in there, let it soak. Okay, can I drink the yeah, go on, help yourself to a drink, guy. The next thing you're going to need to do before you do your chicken two ingredients one, cashew nuts, two, cardamom pods. Okay, handful of cashew nuts, 15 to 20, in my famous blender, but you can see I've used it because I've washed it and it's draining out. About a handful of cashew nuts, 15 to 20 in your blender. Six to eight cardamom pods, all as they are, in your blender. About a quarter of a cup of water, you just want the water just enough that it touches the blades. <laughs> Comes out like a load of milky gooey water. What you do is you go hold it with your stuff, grab a strainer, tip it through the strainer, all the water comes out and leaves you with that. That's exactly what you want. Crushed, ground um, cashew nuts with cardamom. Perfect. The next thing you're going to need to do, one medium sized onion and do exactly the same thing again. One medium sized onion, chop it, put it in your blender, quarter of a cup of water and grind it or blast it in the blender. You're left with your onion paste. Now you can buy onion paste out of the tube, but it's very difficult. Yeah, it's nice. It's very difficult to work out how much out of a tube a medium sized onion is. So the best way to do is a medium sized onion. I mean, they say ground it. You ever try grounding an, an onion? <laughs> Alright, okay, so they're the three things you need to do, okay, before you touch your chicken. Now we've done our peel out, we're marinating our chicken, and we've got all three of these prepared, okay? So this is how we start cooking this meal. Now it's about 22, my wife should be on the way home, all three kids are out, so we're good to go. I'm getting the plates out. There's Lars. So we're good to go. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting the plates out. <coughs> Excuse me, and starting to cook, okay? Okay, so you've done your fresh cream. So you've done your medium-sized onion. And you've done your cashew nuts. Now, <coughs> it says to reserve some of the water you add in your blender because you're going to need that later on. Don't worry about it. Just grab hold of the cup and put a bit of water in it because you don't need that. There's a lot of water that comes out of the onion. So that's good enough for me. All right, okay. Right, now. Now we start cooking the korma. Now, you can use ghee, please. See how much that is? Please. Clarified butter, oh, please. I don't worry about it. Just I use ordinary, you. just use I ordinary know. butter, or just use your oil, or your olive oil, it's up to you. Now if we want to use butter, that's what we're gonna do. So, we use ordinary butter. And this ain't flour in here, this is actually ordinary butter, I use this as a butter dish. Anyway, so, what we're gonna do, okay. Two tablespoons, all right? So one, two. That's it. That's the first thing. Now, what we do is to that, we add black peppercorns, okay? Now, there should be whole, about five or six of them, but you know, I've got the crushy stuff. So what you do is you just crush black peppercorns in there until you're happy with it. I like that crunching through the bits and pieces. So give it a good going, so it should be six to eight of them. You crush six to eight peppercorns, so that's quite a lot. So anyway, that's good enough for me there. Six to eight peppercorns, we go. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that. Cloves. Five to six of them. Take them out. Right, Lars? Cloves. Cloves. Five to six of them. 
chips. Okay, so we're going to take them out. Claw. This is a bit of a lengthy recipe, but it'll be worth it. One, two, three, three four, four, five, five. six. Six cloves. Lots and lots uh, of ingredients and herbs and spices in this. Okay, six cloves, yeah? Uh, now it says one cinnamon stick, but you know me with a cinnamon stick. So I'm just going to take some cinnamon powder. Hold on a minute. Use a teaspoon. No, I doubt he'll do it. Thank you. All right. And about a stick's worth, which in my opinion will be about half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon straight in. Okay, that's the cinnamon. Right, and the last thing you want is the famous aniseed smell. Love these. Remind me of blackjacks. No blackjacks or licorice toffee. Star anise. You want one star anise broken up. Smell that, Lars. Oh, mm. smell that. Let's see what it smells like as well. Sambuca. Wait. Meal, the last time I drank that. Smell? A sambuca smell. And a seed. Mm. Oh, it smells yummy. All right, wow. one. Blackjacks. Star... Yeah, blackjacks. That's it. So, one star anise. There's your star anise. One star anise. You want to break it up. Just break it in a bit. That's it. One star anise broken. Okay. Okay. Hold on, one star one. anise. Okay. And last but not to least. Two or three bay leaves. I've got a few broken bits in here, so just sprinkle a few broken bits in there like that. No offense, it's two or three bay leaves, but let's break a couple in there. That's it. That's it. <coughs> let's keep all that back. And that's it. Now what we do with that is we brown it. So that's what we're gonna do. So that comes me original spoon. We put the gas on. Okay, and we start browning all of those ingredients together, okay? So that's what we're going to do. I'll show you as we go along like I normally do. But you've just seen what I've got in this saucepan, so you know what I'm cooking. Right, I'm back this is a very thin saucepan. Very thin. Back okay, so it cooks very quickly. So all you want to do is just brown these ingredients. That's all you want to do. Hello, guys. Okay? Okay, now. When these are browned, the first thing you're going to add it's your onion paste you made, don't forget, remember? Onion in a blender, a little bit of water and ground the life out of it, okay? I'm coming to get so you! Turn this down because I want them to brown, not burn. So, let's turn it down a bit. As I said, this is a very lengthy meal. Okay, so you can see how it is very lengthy meal. It takes a lot of time, a lot of preparation, a lot of ingredients. You've got toys in worth it at the end, okay? So it smells coming up from there. I've already just seen the ingredients I've got in. You've got Smells delicious already. There's nothing even here cooking except for a few herbs and spices. Okay, that's brown, lovely now. Can't really show you. What's your head, big guy? What's your head? Can't really show you properly, but there you see, that's brown now. First thing we do, onion straight in. Oh, onion straight in. That's your onion paste. And we give that a stir. Now we brown that now, okay? So keep your heat up. It's not too hot because you don't want to burn it. You'll see it in a minute, big guy. You don't want to burn it, you just want to brown it. Okay, let's keep stirring that. That's it. Mix that all together. And start stirring. Follow me. You're supposed to add a little bit at a time and let it brown, but it kept you 28 minutes already. But like I said, this is a meal cooked from scratch, ingredient by ingredient. Can you do that in 10 minutes? You know? All these skipping videos. Now fast forward in them all or cooking them all beforehand and then just showing you the end result. You need to know how to cook this from scratch with every single ingredient used. I'm using probably just the herbs and spices alone. I'm probably using about 12, you know? You cannot do that in five minutes. That takes proper instruction and these things to be able to go in a specified way, okay? So, you've had your onion paste, let it brown until it leaves the sides of the pan, please. You know what I mean? Just brown it. You know, I'm just leaving the side of the pan and jumping up out to give you a kiss. I can't do that. You know, so it smells gorgeous. Okay, that's starting to bubble now, starting to brown. Okay, that's beautiful. It's all brown now. I can see I've got to be careful because this container's really hot. Cheap six quid job from me, babe. But hey, Anna, see it? See what I'm doing now? Beautiful. Lovely and brown mixture there. Now, brown the onions. So you've got the onions brown in and all your ingredients, okay? Now, next thing you're going to do, next thing you're going to do is turn that down. You're going to add, excuse me, the spices are making me all tingle. Okay, next thing you're going to do, one teaspoon turmeric. So, turmeric, 
One teaspoon. Put that in and then mix well again. So, one teaspoon turmeric. Not too much, just a normal level teaspoon. Teaspoon turmeric, straight in. Okay? Done that. Give that a stir. Stir that in. You should have a nice, thick paste at the bottom of your pan now. But it's gorgeous, wonderful smells coming out of it. It should be a really nice, really nice paste to that. Lovely. It's like a puree. It's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, puree. So, you've got a nice puree there. Mix well. Okay, once brown, add your cashew nut mix. That's what we're going to do again. So, that's nice and brown. Cooked lovely. Put on your silver steam. It smells amazing. So, we're going to turn it a little bit. Add your cashew mix. Remember, 15 to 20 cashew nuts. Five to six cardamoms, a little bit of water in your blender, grind to that, pour off the water. See that? Straight in now. No messing around. Straight in. Okay, again, mix it well. So there we go. Let's mix some more. Turn it up a bit. Like I said, it's a very thin pan, so it's very easily. Okay, so now we're going to do that. Okay. Yeah, oh my god, that smells delicious. Um, oh, that's doing good. Mommy, this right, now come your spices. And so you want one the teaspoon of coriander and one teaspoon of cumin. Okay? Turn that down. So where we go? One yeah. teaspoon of one teaspoon of coriander. Okay? So one teaspoon of coriander. Mmm, delicious. One teaspoon of coriander. One teaspoon of cumin. No, baby. So you've got your coriander, then you've got your cumin. Straight in. Done. Smells already in the kitchen. It's obvious. When you cook this at home, it smells will be delicious. Same again. Mix them up well. Turn your heat down a bit. Make sure they're all mixing nice up there. What you want now, which is why you've got a little water left over, what you want this now is to add a little bit of water to it and mix it to a smooth curry paste. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a smooth curry paste already. Come on, I'll show you. That's a smooth curry paste already, quite simply because of the water out the onion. But look at that. Look at that beautiful smooth curry paste already. So you don't need any more water with that. Not yet. Okay? <coughs> smooth curry paste. Okay? Now what you do now is you add your marinated chicken. Okay? And that's what we're gonna do. So here we go, there's our chicken we marinated earlier, remember? Beautiful. We're gonna pour that straight in. Sorry this is a long one guys, but but well, trust me, when you cook this, it'll be worth every minute. Okay? Alright, and now what we do is we cook that off now. Is now what we're looking to raise the temperature a bit. And now, mix that, turn that over into all your curry paste you've cooked. Even marinated chicken. Now what you want to do now, you want to mix it all together like it is. And then what you want to do now is just add a little bit of water to it. Until you are happy with the consistency. And then, once you're happy with the so we'll put a little bit of water in it. Not too much. A little bit of water. Just like that, just a little drip of water. Give that a stir. Just like that. Oh my god, look at that. You've got no idea this looks like, I'll show you in a minute. Okay, now, what we're going to do now is cook that for about 15 minutes. I got rubbed there. So we'll leave that there like that. Put that there, I'm going to put my lid on, and I'm going to cook that for about 15 minutes until I'm happy with the chicken actually being cooked, okay? When I've cooked the chicken for about 15 minutes, I'll come back in a minute and we'll finish off the last of the ingredients because we've virtually done now, okay? Nice, take care, stay there, see you in a minute. Okay guys, we're back, 15, 20 minutes later, everybody's in now, okay? Chicken's done, okay? Now comes your final bits and pieces now. Absolutely, your final bits and pieces. 
Okay, turn your gas right down after 15 minutes. All your chicken's cooked, it's bubbling away nice. See if I can show you before I tip it all over the bloody worktop. There you go, beautiful. Okay, so now what we need, your cream and your saffron. Your cream and your saffron, been soaking in there. Straight into your chicken, pour straight in. Okay, pour straight into your chicken. Right, like guys. Yeah, single hello, cream, by the way. Last time I did this, you used double cream and it came out really thick. <laughs> So single cream this time, give that a little stir in. Oh. Right, okay. Next thing, um, right, salt to taste. Mm. Right, right, mm. Salt to taste. Boom. Sugar. Last but not least, happy lemon juice. Oh, wow. What I'm going to do, use my lemonade from the other day. Let's shake it, let's shake it. Just a block. Shake it, just a little block. Mind your mind. Mind your mind. Don't do it in the bathroom. That's it. Mind your mind. Come out in the fridge. Don't do it in the bathroom, please. Come guys, wash your hands. Who's done the table? Me. Give it a little stir. Slow it in the bathroom, please. That's what you're trying to remember twice. So a little stir. Just like that. Stir it all up. Like that. Done that. Let it cook for two minutes and serve. And that's it. That's how to cook. Pilo rice. Homemade chicken korma. As I said, cook it for two minutes. Put your pilo rice on the plate. That's the pilo rice we cooked earlier on. There it is. That's the pilau rice we cooked earlier on. So put that in your plate first. I can't really show you. I can't really show you. Well, because it will tip out otherwise. Here's all your chicken korma. As I said, pilau rice on a plate, chicken korma over the top, scoff, enjoy it. Hope you like it. Try it out, tell me what you think. Take care, see you later. Hello everyone right, guys, back. Sorry we're back, but they want me to show you. And us dishing it up, okay? Yeah. So there's the three kids' meals, there's the three plates, alright? You ready? Okay. So, little pilo rice, bit of bubba. <laughs> now, last. That's me, everybody. Hello. So a little bit there, like that. That's me. This is my plate right here. A little bit of chili. Very nice, indeed. Do mums and dads in a minute. Alright, a little bit yeah. of chili as well, so you can see that. Let the kids okay. get sort that sorted Sorry, out first. Alright, now, now comes, Okay, and now comes the chicken corner bit. Are you ready for this? This is delicious. Right, let's okay. see this guys. Let's see this. Me pans off. Okay, stop fighting. Right, turn it like that. Oh my god, look at that. Ready? Chicken corn, homemade chicken corn. Look at that. Beautiful. Just like you do the takeaway, only better. Okay, now a nice one right close to you now. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful chicken corn. Fresh. Homemade. The smells are amazing. A couple more chunks there. A couple of more chunks there. And as I said, serve it with rice, bread. Pop it down, naan bread, and there you have it. Oh. Have a seat in the light. Homemade, homemade pilo rice and chicken korma. Right? Happy? If you're not happy, you need to know anything, rewind the video, or leave me a note, and I'll give you all the ingredients to do this. All right? Once again, take care. See you later. Bye. Say bye, Lars. Bye bye, everybody. Turn it off. Turn it off.